ahead and finish this up. This right here is actually a real simple thing to do. Okay. Um, first of all, is this a one-to-one -one function? Yeah. Yeah. Why? How do you know it's one-to-one? -one? Because it passes the horizontal line test, like we talked about last time. It just means every y has exactly one x. So if you pick a y value, which is one, it only has one x value. So that means it has an inverse. So actually, all in the world you have to do to do an inverse on this problem is this. Like you take this point, one, four, and you turn it around. Okay? And then you plot it. So that point would just be four, one. Okay, like that. Take the point, zero, two. You turn it around. So that's going to be two, zero. So you plot that. And you kind of connect the dots as you go, like that. And then let's see, the other thing we have is negative 2, 1. So that's going to change into 1, negative 2. So you can plot that. And the last one is negative 4, negative 2. So that's going to change into negative 2, negative 4. And then when you plot that, that's what your inverse would look like like that. Okay, so it looks symmetrical, doesn't it? The thing is that what happens on this is inverses, all they are is the points go backwards, the x and y get interchanged, and it's always symmetrical about the line y equals x. And this is the line, that dashed line I have on there is y equals x. That's all there is to it. That's a good example of what an inverse function looks like when you graph it. Everybody with me there? Okay. All right, this next one, we'll just do exactly the same thing on this. Um, and what I'm going to do is just try to find maybe three good points. So it looks like I have a point. That point right there is 2, 0. Uh, this point right here is 0, negative 4, I think. And let me see if I can find one more. I like that one right there. I think I do anyway. Gosh, help me out. You guys are young and got good eyes. Is that 4, 11? Is that good? I can barely see sometimes on these little dots. Okay, so I think that's right. Right? All right. Okay, kind of, 411, that's good enough. Okay, I think it may not be perfect. So again, what you do is you just uh, change the points around. So you'd have a point 0, 2, so that would be a new point on your inverse. Uh, this one would go around to negative 4, 0. So you would have that point right there. And then this point would go out to, I guess if I got that right, 11, 4. So I'll just go out 11 and then up 1, 2, 3, 4 like that. And then if you plot these, then this graph would be going like this, kind of. Okay? That looks good to me. Okay? Can you guys see how it's symmetrical about that dashed line again? Okay? Basically what happens is these things flip over that line, and inverses always have that symmetry. Y equals X is a 45-degree angle. It's just a linear function with Y intercept of zero. Okay? Everybody with me on those two problems? That's real simple. That's kind of what inverses are. Okay? Next thing is also real simple, but it's mostly testing that you understand what the language is. So if you're given a statement f of 4 equals 3, what does that tell you? That tells you you have a point, right? Okay, that's an x value. That's 3. Well, not 3. <laughs> okay. 4. All right. So that's 4. And then that y value is 3. That's what function notation is telling you. It's just telling you. Uh, the y value is 3 when x is 4, okay? Now, what this is asking is it's saying, what is f inverse of 3? What would it be? Everything's backwards, so what would it be? Four. It would be 4, right, okay? Because what that's telling you is that's just telling you the point 3, 4 is on the inverse. That's it. That, to me, that problem is just seeing if a student understands the language and the terminology, okay? Next one's the same thing. That would say when x is negative 3, y would be 5, okay? So what's the answer to g inverse? Negative 3. Okay, everybody understand what I did on that page? Okay, that's a real simple kind of way to wrap up inverses. We did the, the more difficult part of that section 